Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets end of day analysis on the 4th of April, Monday 2016. Be sure to visit tradesignaler.com and download the latest app from the Google Play and the Apple Store. It basically is a new uh, product from CFDs.com that streamlines uh, market analysis and information uh, in uh, real time. And uh, my analysis is certainly streamed on there as well. Okay. European markets certainly finished uh, in the green, even though the Asian markets are certainly weak overnight and the US markets are currently trading negative. Interesting day, folks. Interesting day. Let's try and decipher exactly uh, what happened uh, in terms of the uh, the actual uh, price action. So let's bring up the European markets first of all. Okay, so as you can see from the uh, from the initial or from the outset, we had the uh, the market certainly go negative, certainly get a week from the outset, uh, and then we obviously um, managed to potentially bounce here as well. So initially we sold off and we hit a pivot low of two nine thirty. Okay, on the euro stocks before this inverted head and shoulders formation kicked in. So basically what happened here and, and, and why did we have the initial sell off and then obviously the market started to rally. Okay, first of all, the US market certainly finished very stellar on a Friday, finished higher and finished uh, uh, with the immense strength going into the close. Okay, now obviously the stronger US momentum was uh, was expected to, to uh, maintain a rally in the European markets too. Obviously, a potential there for a gap fill at 3,000, okay, with US markets being so strong, with the NASDAQ hitting uh, a session high of 4550 before it eventually pulled back down to uh, 4510 at the moment. So, so initially, uh, the market certainly ignored that. Why? Because of the uh, concerns with regards to the Nikkei being weaker on the back of sales tax hike. And we also had concerns with regards to uh, the Saudis and their ability to uh, potentially... Uh, uh, not join the uh, output freeze uh, and certainly cast that in doubt and that obviously sent the commodity stocks reeling as well not only that we have we've had the euro usd above the 1.14 handle which again is a cause of concern so if i go to a 60 minute chart we currently have a hns formation so bear that bear keep that pattern in mind folks and that certainly is a very settled for me i'll certainly be looking to potentially short the euro provided fundamentals aligned at the moment everything is indicating to me that we are going to move lower based on the fact that Mr. Rosengren has uh, certainly uh, put forth some uh, hawkish comments, okay? That certainly will help the dollar, potentially, and uh, even though US market data is is very weak and uh, does call for a weak uh, decline in the dollar, the US dollar certainly seems to have made a base. i just bring the chart of the US dollar and show you. Uh, you can see here the US dollar certainly has made a base in the 60 minute chart. You can see we're trading sideways, no lower lows, okay? Even with today's weaker US data, given the fact that uh, ISM missed at 50.4, labor market conditions worse than expected, well, not worse than expected, but certainly worse uh, at minus 2.1. Uh, factory orders certainly worse than expected, minus 1.7%. So there's nothing to cheer about in terms of the uh, US data. And one would argue, uh, come to a conclusion that yes, the data was weak and therefore the dollar should fall. Okay, well, Mr. Rosengren certainly has turned that around. So again, that, of all eyes on Mr. Rosengren, and we'll see exactly what that shot, uh, how how that those the, 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 his comments will have reverberations on the uh, the actual uh, market itself. That's going to be very interesting. Okay, so. All eyes on that as well, okay? So certainly keep an eye on that uh, situation, okay? Now, the dollar obviously basing here is uh, good news for the euro USD. Uh, if you are a bull on European equities, okay? That certainly signals a top on the euro USD, which in turn signals a, 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 a bottom in the European indices, okay? So that was one of the reasons, okay? Not only that, we had, uh, in terms of the eurozone, we had inflation coming out weaker than expected. Unemployment rate certainly held steady. Producer prices certainly came in at minus 0.7, worse than expected. Okay, so again, that certainly highlights the concerns that we had Mr. ECB prior, uh, certainly uh, with his dovish comments, talking down the potential currency. And uh, obviously, um, the same old speech, folks, the same regurgitated speech that they have all the tools at their disposal, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I mean, adding the fact that the Russians came in, uh, got involved, okay, the Russians got involved with regards to um, stating that once the uh, Iranians having have increased their uh, output to 4 million uh, barrels per day then they will certainly join the uh, the actual uh, accord and, and certainly go out go ahead and obviously uh, stick with the output freeze etc etc okay 
which again, the Saudi comments on Friday, again, the Russians did state that they were going to discuss and consult the Saudis with regards to their comment on Friday. So again, interesting scenario. So that, uh, those, all those uh, situations together, certainly uh, all, all those variables together, along with obviously stronger uh, UK PMI data, that certainly helped. Uh, in terms of unemployment in the Eurozone, that certainly was strong. Centix investor confidence certainly came out weaker though, so bear that in mind. Okay, but nevertheless, it certainly helped propel the weaker euro, helped propel the euro stocks certainly higher, okay? Especially given the fact that you had stronger uh, close on US markets on a Friday and, uh, and the strong momentum was certainly pushing through there, okay? Even though we had this dip, we create this inverted head and shoulders and that, that gap fill certainly remains a target. Now, at the moment, we've uh, come back and retested the uh, neckline. So the retest of the neckline certainly does act as potential support. So we are into support at this juncture. Even if you use a Fibonacci retracement tool, take the Fib high, low to the high, you've retraced at 61%. So this is certainly a zone where we should or we are expecting to potentially move higher uh, in the uh, the markets themselves. Okay, so all eyes on the uh, the euro stock certainly to potentially move higher. Okay, if I go to a daily chart, the euro stocks, you can see that we are at previous resistance equals support. There's certainly an argument here for us to push higher on the back of obviously QE and Mr. Mr. ECB, perhaps to uh, dovish talk, etc. And given the fact that US markets certainly remain bullish as well. Okay, right. In terms of the German DAX, let's see exactly where this is uh, currently uh, at. Daily chart at the moment is, is below that uh, diagonal trend line, which is a cause for concern, folks. Uh, having said that, we are holding this horizontal support. So again, that must be respected. 60 minute chart of the German DAX. Let's just bring this up. Obviously, we um, we made a lower low today. We are currently experiencing a lower high, although we do have two unfilled gaps above. Now, if the Euro USD still can uh, can go ahead of that HNS formation, then you are looking at a potential reverse in the German DAX. A lower Euro is good for your EU equities, and you are looking for a push higher. Also, US markets need to be watched closely as well. If I bring up the chart of the S&P 500, at the moment we are still languishing in that double top resistance at 30, um, sorry, 2070. If the market continues to push high and break above new highs uh, and takes out that uh, 2080 zone, then your next level is at 2100, which in turn obviously helps the uh, European markets to move higher as well. So there are a lot, there's a lot of um, variables involved here, folks, a lot of variables as to uh, which way this market is going to go and uh, should be interesting to observe that. OK, so certainly bear that in mind, OK, in terms of the uh, the actual market itself from the uh, European perspective, given the fact that US markets are very strong and that should technically help the uh, the European markets as well. OK, German DAX again, like I said, 60 minute chart, if we can make a higher low here and then we should make a higher high to close that potential gap above. Going to the 10 minute chart, you have a bullish uh, pattern. You have an inverted head and shoulders formation that's certainly screaming for that gap to be closed above. So again, certainly keep an eye on that. In terms of a reversal, if you do go back, we are looking at pre-testing at 9900 level, and that will be considered a horizontal resist. Moving on to the CAC now, folks. Let's see where the CAC finished today. The daily chart at the moment still remains weak. I mean, we've obviously um, failed to hold on to that support level here. Uh, realistically, I mean, you do have potential support here, which we've obviously held, and the next support is gap filled below at 4150. So, if, if anything, the uh, the French CAC certainly is the weakest link. 60 minute chart, the French CAC, yes, we went back down to that gap fill level horizontal support. We've bounced, okay. Now, again, we have two unfilled gaps above that, certainly need to close, and all eyes will remain on those gaps, okay. 10 minute chart of the French CAC, a previous resistance equals support. That certainly has held at the uh, 4 to 4, 3, 30 level. Uh, we did go up and close that gap today, actually. We, well, not entirely, but that gap still certainly remains. So gap fill, res gap fill is probably the game in town, okay? So looking to potentially push higher and close the gaps above. Previous support equals resistance in this zone here, which is around the 4, 3, 80. And that's a level to, uh, to certainly observe and watch as well, okay? That's basically what we're looking for, okay? In terms of the uh, the French CAC, okay. Now the next zone here, looking at the FTSE 100. Uh, let's have a look at this chart, the daily chart, the FTSE 100 at the moment. Uh, it's it's a real tricky one, and it's a real messy index. This is at, at present. That's all. That's the only way of describing it, really. Uh, you've broken out the rising contracting wedge pattern, okay. We reversed. Uh, we were consolidating here for a bear flag. Then we put in a bullish engulfing candle, obviously in the back of strong oil prices, etc. Now. 
Given the fact that the Saudis obviously uh, disappointed, and then you had the uh, the uh, FTSE trade right back down to that six thousand eighty level again, and then we subsequently had a bounce on tested six thousand two hundred. The fact that uh, even though the uh, Saudis did utter the fact that they were they, they were not going to join the uh, oil production freeze, the fact that um, the Russians have intervened and said that they were going to monitor the output of each individual who were to join the output freeze and. Uh, Certainly question the uh, the comments of the Saudis, etc., etc. That helped oil prices certainly short squeeze higher. And another story as well, which I've forgotten, is the Grexit scenario. The Grexit certainly was a concern. That's why the European markets failed to uh, continue the US rally. So Grexit certainly uh, ha, ha, uh, is certainly weighing on this market as well with regards to a potential leak from the IMF. I think it was to do with Cyprus's government. And again, that's certainly hurting the uh, sentiment in Europe. Okay, yeah, understand. Okay, so FTSE on 100 helped by stronger UK data today to a large part. Uh, the market certainly did push higher. If I go to a 60 minute chart, you can see we pushed higher and uh, the pivot high was around 6202. So we certainly tested that zone again. Uh, the HS formation has been negated now, folks, so bear that in mind. And the potential 6220, 6210 a retest is certainly not out of the question, especially if oil prices can hold. Okay, 10 minute chart of the FTSE 100 now. Obviously, we we're pushing lower. It certainly seems to have made a base at 6155. Uh, again, 6155 certainly seems to be an important zone historically as well. Okay, and whether or not we can go higher and close that gap at 6208. And then resistance at 6215 and potentially 6220. So again, keep an eye on that zone, okay, in terms of the uh, equity markets themselves. Okay, uh, let's quickly cook up the chart of oil now. Uh, now, the oil is in a uh, bearish formation, given the fact that it's in a... A period of lower lows and lower highs again that bearish channel certainly is being questioned now so again certainly something to keep an eye out for you do have previous resistance equal support in this zone here if you continue to move lower so all eyes on the price of oil it hasn't made a new low so again that certainly is is certainly got a, a bullish argument for the uh, bulls from my perspective and you want provided we can hold this pivot low here at uh, uh, 38 2.2 then you do have uh, a strong argument to push higher back up to this 37.7 zone on the uh, price of oil so again certainly needs to be given care careful observation uh, in terms of the uh, next movement let me just draw the diagonal trend line here okay so we're in that zone okay so any push higher here will be interesting to see how the market reacts okay now i'm bringing up a chart of copper as well copper certainly is very important Copper is into previous resistance equals support, so copper is into a support zone, that and uh, an argument to move higher here is very very strong. Okay, certainly very strong, very very strong. Okay, in terms of my understanding, okay, in my perspective, so copper certainly pushing higher it would obviously help uh, the um, uh, commodity currencies as well. We are into diagonal trend line support. Oil prices looking at support, so you are looking at quite a potential thrust here. Okay. If you bring up a chart of the Aussie, you can see that we've certainly held that double bottom as well. So again, uh, another argument here for the uh, FTSE 100 to certainly rally. Uh, quite Could be quite a stellar rally as well. So again, keep an eye on that zone. Aussie certainly is holding, certainly looking bullish. Okay, so we're currently trade testing the 6180s on the FTSE now as well. So again, that's certainly interesting to uh, to see. Okay, so FTSE has negated the IA in uh, h &S formation, which is very interesting, very impressive. And you are looking at 6210, 6220 potential test of the uh, the FTSE before we potentially will move lower. Again, US markets will dictate, folks, so bear that in mind. They'll certainly dictate sentiment and direction. If you do get a fast, sharp reversal out of the US, then you are looking at weakness in the European markets as well. Okay, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and uh, certainly qualify for that new account or cash bonus offer. Terms and conditions apply. And visit the uh, educational site as well and also the trade signal apps for folks don't forget that the trade signal app is very very important so you download that and all my analysis will be streamed on there okay i think that's a wrap for monday uh, end of day european markets goodbye now